We are doing the Palatine part two. There is so much good stuff on the Palatine Hill. We wanted to show you a little bit more of it after last week. Hello everybody, welcome back to the tiny tour. Um, now, second part of the Palatine, as we promised last week. It's a place I kind of grew up in. My mom's a tour guide. I grew up here running around since I was a kid, water boy status at the beginning and then doing tours. Now, the palace where I'm top has been here for far, far longer than me. This place started being built basically around the time of Christ. So looking at the palace of the Emperor Tiberius being right underneath me. The palace starts being built around the 14th after Christ. So imagine that at that point you'd have it being one of the largest structures in Rome. It had three floor structures with more than 150 rooms. It would have actually been a crescendo towards the top of uh, steps all covered in immaculate North African marble. From the top of which the Emperor could see its ever growing city and the forum. Now, most of the buildings you see down below would probably be included in a future tiny tour as far as the Supreme Court of Rome, the giant three arches, and the Church of St. Francesca. But today's topic is actually the Palatine Hill part two. So follow me this way. Now, as the ages go, remember last time I was telling you guys that this is where Romulus and Remus started and later the Republican senators had houses. Ultimately, the emperors are gonna have their own palaces. Well, Tiberius is the first emperor to actually build a palace here. As the ages will progress, imagine this place will stay popular. You have a great vista of Rome, as you probably already saw around. So by the 1500s, the papacy, coming out of Renaissance and moving towards the Baroque period, are going to commission a series of gardens here. The orders are going to come from a Pope called Paul III, and nepotism doesn't even start describing the whole thing, because it's going to be made by Cardinal Deacon Alessandro Farnese, which is 14 years when he was made son. Why? He's the grandson of the Pope. Now, Cardinal Farnese is going to be the man running the garden for the rest of his life. The garden at the beginning is going to start being mainly a Mediterranean plant garden with Italian um, plants, but as the ages progress, the Farnese family is going to control it more or less all the way to the 18th century, to the 1700s. At that point, plants will be brought in from all around, such as we'll see a bit further. Um, basically, papyrus from the Nile, water lilies from the Danube, you have um, roses from Bulgaria. Right over here on the left, and move a bit to the side, there's a group coming through. Right over here on the left, you have a rose garden. The rose bed is also the final resting bed of the first archaeologist and custodian of the place, a man called Giacomo Boni. To many, he's remembered as the hermit of the Palatine due to the, his dedication and the fact that he started digging here in his 30s. He dug here basically to his death in his 60s. Throughout the age, World War I happened, he donated his balloon as a scouting corps because he used to use that to see the ruins, to see where he digs. And he's the man that actually saved this part of the garden, sacrificing the rest. So if you ever come to Rome, you'll see the Roman Forum is all dug out. That's Giacomo Boni destroying the garden. If you see the back part, remember last time we saw what was a quarry. Well, that part was dug out, it was a garden as well. So this was basically covering up all of those uh, parts. Now, the plants here haven't really been changed for about 150 years. So by regulation, they keep the same seeds. We have some of the oldest rose species in Europe, actually. About two, three weeks ago, I was around here with some clients. One of them almost fainted because of the roses. Nowadays, you've noticed how most roses look Photoshop worthy, but they smell like paper. That's genetical manipulation, but these ones haven't. They're more than 150 years old, so if you come to Rome, come to Rome, period, the bloom, it will knock your socks off. So bad that they actually put orange trees and lime trees all around. Now, the central focus of the garden would be this way, if you turn with me, Angela, but you have two aviaries built in the late 1600s. They would release parrots, parakeets, multicolored birds of your head. They would be rented with the garden. Imagine many nobles that came to Rome would rent it for family receptions, weddings, etc. Imagine not all pilgrims are poor pilgrims. Some of them are luxury pilgrims, and this would have been where the luxury pilgrims of Europe would have come. My question ever since I was a kid, I'm still looking for it, is if you rent birds, would you also rent umbrellas? But we'll figure that one together. Uh, now, as we're going down this way, you see in the distance the Church of St. Sebastian. Church being built by the Barberini family. We touched a bit on it last time. To today, it has live orchards of that one. groves, uh, olive groves, and they recently planted Bellona um, grapes, which is one of the most ancient types of grapes mentioned by Pliny and Cicero back in the day as the Romans' favorite. So if you come back from next year, you can actually buy a wine made by the monks on the Palatine Hill at the Church of St. Sebastian. Now, as we're going this way, obviously, if you do buy that wine, I expect you to buy at least four of my tours. <laughs> you can imagine the price. Uh, now, 
As we go down, the actual central piece of the botanical garden would have been the two bird cages with the family-owned fountain going down into a series of balconies. And that's where we're going to end today's tiny tour. We're going on the balcony on top so we can see how the whole thing would have been basically an esplanade going down level by level, kind of like a cascade of flowers. Now, who in the Renaissance age would want to marry there? Besides having a garden, you have a church built over a temple of Venus. You have another church built over the tomb of an empress that died too young and her husband never remarried and dedicated his whole life to her. Imagine saying that to your girlfriend. And see, if I don't drop the camera, the camera drops itself. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going through guys. Last view I want to give you, yes, watching me for about 10 minutes, probably not pleasant, so I'm going to fade away slowly and let something that hasn't faded for 2,000 years just do the camera. Thank you for watching. Have a very good day and enjoy.